Hello everyone, it's Unit 13 here on Scene at the Homestead and I want to make a quick project out of this well tool supposedly Molly flashlight holder but it's not, it really isn't a, a Molly flashlight holder. I'm going to take this flashlight out so make it easy to demonstrate that. In order to be considered Molly or PALS it has to have a specific and let me grab this section here in order to be PALS considered PALS the pouch ladder attachment system it has to have one inch of web one inch of space one inch of web and then across here on the vertical they're stitching that's every inch and a half across here that ladder section of web is missing from this pouch. What I'm going to do is undo this seam that's on here. Probably pull this label off. I don't like labels. And then I'll, I'll properly come back and get the spacing marked out and sew this cross section on. Before I do that I'll cut off that belt loop because I'll never use it. This is going to be permanently attached to something but I want it to be fully PALS or meet full PALS specifications. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera and move it around so that we can see what I'm going to do to this next. Change my mind about that. I'm going to rip this seam and leave the camera set up at the angle that it is. This end down here has been bar tacked, so it's got some nice thick stitching on it. I hear people um, <laughs> in their videos, their YouTube videos, they'll say something like, if you've ever done this before, why don't you hit the thumbs up button? So I've got a really good one for you. If you've ever been using a seam ripper and jam this thing up under your fingernail or into your knuckle, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> when you do that, you sure know that you've done it, that's for sure. There won't be any denial about what just happened. The other thing I'll be able to do hopefully is remove this label off of here without having to cut through it. So now we just reached the part there where there was nothing but a single stitch. Looks like we're coming back up into a section where hit the bar tack. It's getting more difficult to move in that direction so I'll flip it over. Uh oh. I think most of that's been off the camera. This section is stitched down quite a bit, so I'm going to make sure I'll do the same thing. Get a good stitch on there. I don't have a bar tack machine, so I'm going to go over it probably three or four times. Now that I've got it in this shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and make a pattern out of this. Or make a pattern off of this. So if I ever want to make another one for a, a, something else, for another reason, I've got the pattern. Be back. Okay, now that I've got the seam taken apart and cleaned up. I've got this one strap here that I want to get rid of and yeah I think I'm just going to cut that so we'll see how it goes. Instead of cutting a piece of webbing, I could have just used this. I didn't think about that. But I'm going to use my web anyway. I guess. All right. So this is going to go down 
down and sit in here like this. Let's give it a little bit of room there. That gives us enough space to snap our snap down here. Yeah, it's hard to get this in the right place to see it. It turned out to be a little more difficult than I expected. Okay, so that's gonna go back around the front. There's the top mark there. And quite often I'll just do something like this by eye. I think that looks good. Mark the top and bottom of that. So when I go to sew these edges here, I know I'm in between the line like I should. Now I'm just gonna set it on top here. This actual item, because this is one of the, yeah, that gives me plenty of room. Oops, not, that's not in frame. Let's see if I can make this go in frame. Yeah, okay. So the place that I've got it set to go is right here in between these two pieces of POW webbing. And I have enough room here for a little bit of pullover, which is what happens with some of the pouches. This will want to curl over just a little bit. I've got enough space for my one inch in here, a one inch webbing. My next layer of POWs on this particular LBE and then I've got enough room to snap it. All right. I still have my green, whoops, hold on. You think you're in California, have an earthquake? I've got um, my green thread in, which I usually use for military type stuff. Although this is black, I'm still going with the green thread because I, I don't want to change it out. It's not necessarily are not necessary for this kit anyway because I'm not color matching. I don't care about that. So I'm going to start that stitch back a little bit. And grab those threads. Try to get away from me. This is on an outer edge where there's going to be a lot of tension, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch this four past this, stitch this four times.
has the flashlight in it. All our stitching, this has got a number of stitches in it because that's where a lot of pressure is going to be. This one is not as many, but should hold up just fine. not precisely where it's going to go on this on this setup. Golly, the light is horrible. All right. This is not precisely where this is going to go, but this is going to give us an idea. There it is. Now we have a more secure and more in tune with the PALS system flashlight holder, which is going to go on this kit, but just not in this spot. Alright, that's it. Unit 13, I'm out. Investigating our response to a seizure at 900 Southwest 113 Terrace. 22-year-old female, unconscious but breathing. Time call 1708. Copy 1708. 